brief memoir of General Clausewitz of On War. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Timothy Ferguson. On War by General Karl von Clausewitz, translated by Colonel J. J. Graham. Brief memoir of General Clausewitz by translator. The author of the work here translated, General Karl von Clausewitz, was born at Berg near Magdeburg, in 1780, and entered the Prussian army as Fahnenjunker, that is, ensign, in 1792. He served in the campaigns of 1793 and 94 on the Rhine, after which he seems to have devoted some time to the study of the scientific branches of his profession. In 1801 he entered the military school at Berlin, and remained there till 1803. During his residence there he attracted the notice of General Scharnhorst, then at the head of the establishment, and the patronage of this distinguished officer had immense influence on his future career, and we may gather from his writings that he ever afterwards continued to entertain a high esteem for Scharnhorst. In the campaign of 1806 he served as aide-de-camp to Prince Augustus of Prussia, and being wounded and taken prisoner, he was sent into France until the close of that war. On his return he was placed on General Scharnhorst's staff, and employed in the work then going on for the reorganization of the army. He was also at this time selected as a military instructor to the late King of Prussia, then Crown Prince. In 1812, Clausewitz, with several other Prussian officers, having entered the Russian service, his first appointment was as aide-de-camp to General Full. Afterwards, while serving in Wittgenstein's army, he assisted in negotiating the famous convention of Torogen with York. Of the part he took in that affair, he has left an interesting account in his work on the Russian campaign. It is there stated that, in order to bring the correspondence which had been carried on with York to a termination in one way or another, the author was dispatched to York's headquarters with two letters. One was from General Dalvray, the chief of staff of Wittgenstein's army, to General Dybich, showing the arrangements made to cut off York's call from MacDonald. This was necessary in order to give York a plausible excuse for seceding from the French. The other was an intercepted letter from MacDonald to the Duke of Bassano. With regard to the former of these, the author says, It would not have had weight with a man like York. But for a military justification, if the Prussian court should require one as against the French, it was important. The second letter was calculated, at the least, to call up in General York's mind all the feelings of bitterness which had, perhaps for some days past, had been diminished by the consciousness of his own behaviour towards the writer. As the author entered General York's chamber, the latter called out to him, "'Keep off from me. I will have nothing more to do with you. Your damned Cossacks have let a letter of MacDonald's pass through them, which brings me in order to march to Pike Tropoen, in order there to effect our junction. All doubt is now at an end.' Your troops do not come up. You are too weak. March I must, and I must excuse myself from further negotiation, which may cost me my head. The author said that he would make no opposition to all this, but begged for a candle, as he had letters to show the general, and, as the latter seemed still to hesitate, the author added, Your Excellency will not, surely, place me in the embarrassment of departing without having executed my commission. The general ordered candles, and called in Colonel von Roder, the chief of his staff, from the antechamber. The letters were read. After a pause of an instant, the general said, Clausewitz, you are a Prussian. Do you believe that the letter of General de Alvray is sincere, and that Wittgenstein's troops will really be at the points he mentioned on the 31st? The author replied, I pledge myself for the sincerity of this letter. Upon the knowledge I have of General Dauvray, and the other men of Wittgenstein's headquarters. Whether the dispositions he announces can be accomplished as he lays down, I certainly cannot pledge myself, for your Excellency knows that in war we must often fall short of the line we have drawn for ourselves. The general was silent for a few minutes of earnest reflection. Then he held out his hand to the author and said, You have me. Tell General Dybisch that we must confer early tomorrow at the mill of Poschenen and that I am now firmly determined to separate myself from the French and their cause. The hour was fixed for 8 a.m. 
After this was settled, the general added, But I will not do the thing by halves. I will get you Massenbach also. He then called in an officer, who was of Massenbach's cavalry, and who had just left them. Much like Schiller's Wallenstein, he asked, walking up and down the room the while, What say your regiments? The officer broke out with enthusiasm at the idea of a riddance from the French alliance, and said that every man of the troops in question felt the same. "'You young ones may talk, but my older head is shaking on my shoulders,' replied the general. After the close of the Russian campaign, Clausewitz remained in the service of that country, but was attached as a Russian staff officer to Blücher's headquarters till the armistice in 1813. In 1814 he became chief of staff of General Walmoden's Russo-German Corps, which formed part of the Army of the North, under Bernadotte. His name is frequently mentioned with distinction in that campaign, particularly in connection with the affair of Goerd. Klausowitz re-entered the Prussian service in 1815, and served as chief of staff to Thielmann's Corps, which was engaged with Grouchy at Wavre on the 18th of June. After the peace he was employed in a command on the Rhine, in 1818 he became Major General and Director of the Military School, at which he had been previously educated. In 1830 he was appointed Inspector of Artillery at Breslau, but soon after nominated Chief of the Staff of the Army of Observation under Marshal Gnisau on the Polish frontier. The latest notices of his life and services are probably to be found in the memoirs of General Brandt, who from being on the staff of Nassau's army, was brought into daily intercourse with Klausowitz in matters of duty, and also frequently met him at the table of Marshal Nisenau at Posen. Among other anecdotes, General Brand relates, upon one occasion, the conversation at the Marshal's table turned upon a sermon preached by a priest in which some great absurdities were introduced, and a discussion arose as to whether the bishop should not be made responsible for what the priest had said. This led to the topic of theology in general, when General Brandt, speaking of himself, says, I expressed an opinion that theology is only to be regarded as an historical process, as a moment in the gradual development of the human race. This brought upon me an attack from all quarters, but more especially from Clausewitz, who ought to have been on my side, he having been an adherent and pupil of Kaiserwetter's, who had indoctrinated him in the philosophy of Kant, certainly diluted, I might even say in homeopathic doses. This anecdote is only interesting, as the mention of Kaiserwetter points to a circumstance in the life of Clausewitz that may have had an influence in forming those habits of thought which distinguish his writings. The way, says General Brandt, in which General Clausewitz judged things, drew conclusions from movements and marches, calculated the times of the marches, and the points where decisions would take place, was extremely interesting. Fate has unfortunately denied him an opportunity of showing his talents in high command, but I have a firm persuasion that as a strategist he would have greatly distinguished himself. As a leader on the field of battle, on the other hand, he would not have been so much in his right place. From a monk de habitude de commandement, he wanted the art de enlever les troupes. After the Prussian army of observation was dissolved, Klausowitz returned to Breslau, and, a few days after his arrival, was seized with cholera, the seeds of which he must have brought with him from the army on the Polish frontier. His death took place in November 1831. His writings are contained in nine volumes, published after his death, but his fame rests most upon the three volumes forming his treatise on war. In the present attempt to render into English this portion of the works of Clausewitz, the translator is sensible of many deficiencies, but he hopes, at all events, to succeed in making this celebrated treatise better known in England, believing, as he does, that so far as the work concerns the interests of this country, it has lost none of the importance it possessed at the time of its first publication. J. J. Graham, Colonel End of Brief Memoir of General Clausewitz Recording by Timothy Ferguson, Gold Coast, Australia